So this session is about the community group, the application review board. Um, we have another session Friday at 10 a.m. where we're going to kind of talk about how the app review board fits in with all of the other bits and pieces with, you know, Maine and universe and backports and how we do new packages in general. So this session is, is kind of focused on how the app review board works, how we can work better, and what our plans should be for the next, next six months. Um, so I'd like to start out, uh, just last week we, we added three new members to the Application Review Board. Um, that's Jonathan Carter, uh, Bhavani Shankar, I'm probably mispronouncing yeah. that, <laughs> and Luke Farone. So you, you may not know them yet, um, but they're going to be very busy for the next six months, I guarantee it. <laughs> So we, we prepared sort of a list of things that we wanted to talk about, but um, if, uh, if you have other topics that you think are important to talk about, please raise them and we'll add them to the list and run through. Uh, so the first one is, this is the first time we ever did elections for the ARB. Uh, uh, we got the process approved by the tech board the week before we ran it. Uh, it, is, it is very much based on the community council's standard process. So the community council has some guidelines for running election processes. And we just went through that and pulled out the specifics for, for our group. Um, but I don't know, do, does anyone have any perspectives about how that went? Is anything we could have done better? What, what, one of the criticisms we got uh, definitely was that we should have added uh, none of the above community in the vote itself. Yeah. Um, just so we, yes. Just to get some more useful data, really, because it was like, please vote for them, but you know, all three of them are going to kind of get through anyway. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit confusing for a lot of people. I mean, we can still get some data because I think you you technically add an option. Uh, well, you could rank someone as what was. The I think so, uh, you could rank them. You could actually rank them as uh, no opinion, which right. then means they don't get any votes, which means they end up weighted very low. But yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think none of the none of the above is a yeah. And, and I think that's something we can discuss that broadly for any board really. We should. Mm -hmm. uh, or none below. Actually, it came from Debian. Or none yeah. below, like you know, nothing below this line. Um, right, and, and then you. So right. Above is not what you want. You want. <laughs> right. Uh, above so, is what you want. Like one, two, three, four. You want. But how does that work if you want? Like the one on the bottom, but not the. You rank them on the top. Uh, isn't, yeah. isn't it like the, the idea is that then when you can get a list of like if you want three people out of a, out of ten, you're going to get a list of ten where you actually have none of the above somewhere, and you know if we need to pick someone else because one is actually getting well, want to be replaced on the board, we can just text anyone who's above that line. Anyone who's below that line was basically like a no from the community. So what tools does Debian use for voting? Because we're using... Devotee. Is, it's, it's an email-based system using GPG. Because the, the <coughs> tools we're using don't have that many options. So, okay. Um, so the way we elect uh, members, right now we're using uh, Civis. Do you know, mm -hmm. you know the system, Jenna? Yeah. 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 So, um, so I, I don't think the specific tools we use in Debian will be of much use for you because they are really tied tied to you know, the way we do authentications, our experience, and all that stuff. But what matters is the actual the, the way you do the election. So how do, you, how do you enable people to vote, and how do you measure who is winning? And there are several implementations that I think Mako as well in general. It's electricity. Yeah, um, exactly. It, at Sugar Labs, uh, I run the elections for the an annual board elections, and this, this is called Search City, which is a product of the... Yeah, yeah Meko was talking about that a couple of years ago. Yeah, it, it's not actually currently maintained, well, as far as Clubbase works, it's Ruby, it's, uh, and we, we could host it ourselves or we can use the one they host, but I'm not quite sure if they have anybody that's actively looking at it. Hmm. We've used it in the elections in the past, and it's a very, very nice user interface, but... Uh, so, as soon as you agree on doing uh, condo silicones, cross set, and blah blah blah, and we'll find plenty of implementation of that. Um, could that wish to derail the discussion, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I'll um, pull it back on if it goes too far. Maybe this is in another session, um, but one thing I would like you mentioned, Alison, about topics to discuss. One thing I think is it strikes me that the most important topic for us to discuss in terms of the ARB is identifying and breaking down the bottleneck. For getting apps approved and through the process, like that's third on the list. 
like, uh, coping with the recent substantial. It strikes me that you know, not wishing to convene the, the discussion about how everything is left and all the rest of it. It strikes me that the, uh, my personal feeling will be that we prioritise exactly that discussion, like how we get the apps through. Because what worries me a little bit about the ARB right now is that I get the impression the ARB is still very much in teething stage, right? You know, it's still very new still kind of finding its feet is that we can identify, you know, Alice and I sat down last week together and a discussion about what those elements are going to be. But I think it could be good for us to have a joint discussion about like what are the what are the what's what what's the problems that are standing in the way of getting an app through the process. Um, because I think right now the average time for an app to go through is like six to eight months, something like that. And just for us to maybe have a joint discussion about what we feel like those bottlenecks are and what we can do to to to, to, to deal with them now. Alice and I sat down last week and we um, I also mentioned that one of these elements is that um, the submissions are coming in and everything so far is up to date, but it's waiting on something from the submitter to, to respond to it. And it could be a licensing issue or they've submitted the wrong content or whatever it might be. So that's next on our list. Um, one quick thing for the elections before we move on. Daniel, um, you kind of helped me a little bit setting up the elections this time. In the next six months, there's a good chance we'll have to elect new members because um, we're going to have to grow for the capacity. Um, can I put you down on our work items to work with me? And, or we'll see if one of the other mem members sure. of the team and just kind of work on how we do elections. Okay. Cool. So just speaking to the ARB members, Cool to get your input as well. Like what do you what do you folks think is the the thing that's the bottleneck right now in terms of just getting the apps through the process? It sounds from what Alison was saying the other day that it's not people it's not the ARB following up with the applications. It's it sounds like it's the, it sounds like it's the expectations that are set to the submitter about what they need to submit. Actually, I actually think it's both of them because one problem we have is latency. So they file a bug and sometime after that we get to look at that and then we provide some feedback at some point, and maybe a week or sometime after that, we get some uh, more data back from the submitter. But having, um, being able to cut out that would be great. So currently, the information is spread across a few wiki pages. And so, so something like in our uh, charter, for example, we have that if something belongs in uh, Debian or uh, in Universe, we'll actually recommend that they do that. But it's one point very late in the document that they probably won't even read. So if there's one checklist that they could go through, make sure that the app is pretty much ready or in good state before it, it gets to us, that would probably help a lot. So before we dive into problem solving, let's start with the, the beginning, which is we have three new members here. We haven't actually had a chance to do any package reviews yet. So do you all, since you're the newest members, do you feel like you have a sense of what our workflow is, or sort of what the next step is, or how, you know, like how, how we do things, or have we completely failed to pass on the knowledge, which is where I'm guessing we are, is completely failing to pass on the knowledge? Maybe not completely, but yeah, pretty much not close. Completely, but <laughs> yeah. well, the pages I've read apparently were the out of date pages that were uh, like the thing. The original put. tech core right. process uh, or original idea pages, not the. The, the very, very long document that doesn't really, apparently isn't really accurate anymore. Okay. So the current uh, process, I'd like to find out where that is so I can you know, read it. So we need better documentation for the current process. Um, the other aspect is the current process is actually completely changing right now. So uh, I guess I emailed you guys this week to say the new My Apps portal has been made available to us. Um, so we're in the process of shifting from using Launchpad tickets to using the My Apps portal entirely for our app reviews. Which means not only is the current process not documented, it's also not right anymore. <coughs> Um, have we has have we gotten accounts for the for the ARB members yet? This is Anthony Lenton, who's uh, doing a lot of the development for the MyApps. I've been giving ARB developers access uh, at some point today, I think. Cool. Not, not yet. So these are going to be private. These are going to be private. Right? Uh, they're going to be public. The, the, queue, 
comments? The queue, right, it's not public yet. We have that on a, uh, on the roadmap for, for yeah, the cycle of this one. So the list is going to be public. Um, we need to discuss what part of the communication between the reviews and the developers needs to be made public also. Because basically we are, we're adapting the regular review cycle that we had for paid apps and we have the app. Okay. I don't know anything about what that looks like. So. <laughs> I would just be interested in having it be public so that people can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that. When you say see it made public, you mean um, the decision that was taken of the app that were made public? So that were, um, approved or the whole communication, the whole thread? Is there a reason why we don't have a lot of work can't be public? I mean, apart from obviously technical implementations, is there any reason why we need to be public? I'd say the one point that you want to watch out for is when things go into the queue, uh, mm -hmm. because in case it's not categorized correctly. Like I'd say for the free apps, you want all the communication, like for the, the Airbnb apps, you want all the communication to be public. but. If someone is submitting an app and it accidentally goes into the wrong queue, um, they may have just released their tarball to the world when it's a proprietary app that they only want for the list. So say once it enters review, it should be made public, but until it files pending review, it yeah. should be. Yeah, like, so like once an, once an ARB member has looked at it and clicked and said, okay, we're going into review now, then at that point, all the communication is public. Make sure One thing we could, we could have it entirely except for the the double itself. We, we, we want it well, to we become public as soon as it's been reviewed to make sure it's not it's 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 Yes, basically, yeah. Just making sure it's not some paid apps that got in the wrong queue. Well, and that's that's review, that's just like it's that happens, really. It, it, no, no, it's, it's not. A tool, it's a tool <laughs> problem, but if we up. have that initial filter, then, because it's it, actually... I mean, this discussion perhaps belongs to the session on, on Friday, because that, I mean, I'm seeing we're going quite down into the technical details. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, we've, we've heard that one of the bottlenecks is latency. Um, does anyone have any ideas on how we could uh, improve that? I mean, is, is latency from both sides, from the IRB and from the submitters? Uh, do you think they're confused by the process? Or? I'd like to make a bold suggestion on the latency front. That if somebody submits, they say, I write my app and I submit it through the process, through the ARB. So I submit my app and I get a response from the ARB saying, uh, we need, we need you to resolve, so resolve an issue in your submission. Maybe it's fixing my licensing or whatever it might be. I think we should put a hard deadline on that, and that should be a week. If, if I don't get back to you within a week, then your submission is rejected. I think part of the problem is that if we say, you've got a month or whatever, then people will just leave it and they'll never get to it and all the rest of it. And now there is one element that could be, well, people may submit something and they go on vacation or whatever it is, but I think you'd be an idiot if you submit something and they went on holiday. That, that has to be, if, if we do something like that, and I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea, it has to be backed up with our own commitment as the ARB to respond to them in a reasonable time too. Because yeah. what happens, what has happened in the past is if we take two weeks to get back to them, then they suddenly think, oh, this isn't urgent, so I can get to it any time, it's going to run slowly, and they get in a completely different mindset yeah. than if we get back to them in an hour. I agree. And they, they but I get the impression we don't need to, I don't think we need to necessarily block and put in a, put in a, a time limit on them. Like, what I'm saying is, like, I think that's a completely, like, we should definitely, like, strive for that, right? With every element of the project, it's just a, a sense of responsiveness. But I just get the impression that if somebody's going through this process, like, uh, when we discussed it the other day, like, there's a lot of apps in there that have been kind of hanging around for a while. Um, and, you know, the part of it's because, you know, uh, the ARB's taking a while, and part of it's because it takes a while for people to get back and, and, and respond to a, a questionnaire. I just think that, one way of cutting down the latency is to just we can make a hard requirement on the on the side of the people who go through the submissions process. The, the ARB is different because everyone's volunteers and everyone's kind of got a certain amount of time to participate. So that was just my bold suggestion is you've got a week. And that's actually quite generous compared to Android and and Apple. How long do they usually present people to you? I think it's like you've got like a couple of days. 
yeah, knowing what they do might be, might be useful. The other thing with that as well is if people are prepared to get back to you within a week, then if you do find issues, the likelihood is they'll know that they need to get back to you within a week, within a week. With, an, with an issue. It's a conversation. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. So, so uh, if, if you try the app, the app breaks on the latest version uh, because they built it for the older version, then the likelihood is they'll get back to you in a week with a fix for them. Um, and if users pick up on issues, they'll be able to get back to you within a week because they know straight away that they've got a week's time frame to fix these things. So what we just did to kind of reset to ground zero is we, gave, we did a month. So for all the old apps that were lingering in our queue, we said, at, at the previous ARB meeting, we said, okay, if you haven't responded by the next ARB meeting, which we do once a month, then uh, we'll clean it out. So we've gone through and cleaned out the queue of all the old. We don't have any old applications from before developer.ubuntu.com unless the developer has been actively responding. Um, so that did I work. I think a week is too short. <laughs> I think, we, I think the work is way too long. Because mm -hmm. if somebody says something to me about anything, like, oh, did you do it within a month? I'll leave it until the last week before I. Let's come into that. I see. Yeah, yeah I did. Mm. Right. Sure. I think there's like two separate issues, though. Like, there's definitely latency on the AOB side, which I think these sessions are going to be good to discuss. So I think a deadline is a good idea. I'm not exactly sure what time it is. Um, I, I think. I th go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just say I, I think we we'll necessarily don't necessarily have to have an answer to a, a, our question of the week. You definitely should respond in some way. Like I'm working on this. So basically, if we ask you, if you ask a, ask a question as an app submitter, and you do and you do nothing for a whole week. Then it's, it's like it's shown that there's no real engagement going on there. You, there should be at least some expectation that the submitter has to say, oh, "I don't know. Let me go check with my boss or whatever it is." It some we, we, you think that you don't necessarily need to have the whole solution to whatever issue we have, but yeah. like like Jonah says, if you give them a lot a lot of time, then they're go it's going to be like the last week in the mo of the month you give them, and they're like, "Oh, um, I need to go public do something about that." Yeah. Whereas if you make them be engaged more often, I then... as well, like, if, I mean, you know, we should be human about it, like, you know, if, if someone says, I'm really sorry, but my wife's having a baby this week, <laughs> like, yes. it's okay That's to fine. Say, we'll get, okay, no worries, I'll take a couple of weeks, but I just think as a general rule, it might just... I, yeah, I mean, it, it, even if somebody gets back to you and says, I'm sorry, I'm really busy this week, can I, can I deal with it next week? Well, not right. the time. And, and you could also say, like, okay, I'll... I'll take it out of the queue right now and I'll, I'll submit it when I have more time. Because I think part of this is like this social engagement mm -hmm. is the ARB are doing something for the person who's submitting it. Like they're, they're, they're engaging with, in a community facility. I think it's okay to say, look, you've got to keep on top of this. So I think we shouldn't try to decide this here in this meeting. Um, I think we should probably decide in the ARB because we have a lot of other things to talk about. Yeah. And we're spending I, I a lot of time idea on one, why don't we one fix. Why don't you make a decision on I have a big uh, point about this. See, the thing is, uh, let us keep the ARB in sync with the deadline given to the developers so that we can review the apps more quickly and provide, uh, provide inputs to the developers more quickly. Like, for example, the ARB meetings uh, two times in a month. Two weeks once and giving the deadline as two weeks for a developer. So that we have time to review and the developer has the time to give his inputs also. That's a good idea. So um, Shane and AJ Mitch, other ARB members aren't here. So for one of the ARB members who are here, would you like to take um, an action of bringing this up on the list so we discuss it there so everybody has a chance to participate in making the decision? What is my Benjamin Mitch is here? <laughs> he's he's here, but he's not here here. I don't want to take decisions without all the like that kind of decision without all the ARP members here. So would you be interested, Luke, in um, so if you want to if you want to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What I think is when someone to say, I mean, I, 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 
sorry. Uh, what happens when someone currently submits an app to they get a response from us that says that thanks we received your application and we're going to look at it or <coughs> um, that is just like an apology bill. Do they get, do they like get an, an automatic, right? an automatic yeah. response when they submit an app? Yes. Yeah. So that's what they get first. And then as soon as we click the button to say we're reviewing it, they get an automatic notification of that. And at each stage in the process as we go through, uh, they get an automatic notification. But they don't have at the moment as a way to say, OK, I'm working on this, but I get back to you in a bit. But that should be something that's really bad. I mean, the only way to get back to us is actually resubmitting. <coughs> So if we ask them a question, do they have to resub they don't have to resubmit then, they can just make updates to the application. They the way they they can answer the, the way to add notes is accompanied with a resubmission, yeah. I don't know. Okay. So we need to have a session later this week where we just sit down with you and do a tutorial on a new system. That would be tomorrow's software center server roadmap session. If you want to come to that. Okay. If you need ideas, it would be great. Is it is that for all end to end? Is it even yet? No. Yeah, I don't think we're in a So, in a sense, we don't really know how long that is not going to be until it's two years later. So, what that makes is uh, the next item on the agenda. Let's see. Oh, not the next one. The next, next one. So, this one here workflow for new packages. Um, so what that item was supposed to be is we sit down and talk because we've been using launchpad tickets. We've been using statuses in all different ways and we haven't really coordinated on that. But since we're not using launchpad anymore, um, then we don't really, there, there's no point in spending time figuring out how to clean up that process. We should just spend the time figuring out how to work with, with those tools. Um, So the next one is response time on new submissions. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, we are, like AJ Mitch mentioned, we are kind of lagging a bit. Um, I've, I've been trying to keep on top of the queue, but I, I know there's been cases where a week or more went by on some of the new submissions when they mm -hmm. didn't hear anything. From, they got the automatic response, but not, that's not the same as, sure. uh, we looked at your tarball, um, you had this, this problem, here's the next thing you need to do. Um, so what, what do you, I mean, what do we think is the reason why, so we've got what, 25, 30 apps like that that are currently in the queue. What I'm struggling to understand is what the reason is as to why. I think why we just haven't there. established a regular pattern yet. Yeah. I mean, so we're, we, like, we got new folks, we've got like a completely different load of packages. So no, I, um, I, 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 go ahead. I, I was just going to say like, I, well, all I, I think what will be a useful use of our time is to see what the common themes are. I mean, there's always going to be like lots of specific reasons. And sure. One of the common themes is uh, people just are busy, um, mm -hmm. don't have enough members, then that's obviously something we can you know, work with Daniel to have a broken membership base to help onboarding. One of the reasons is you know, the submissions process. Is, you know, people submitting content that's not in line with what the ARB is there to review, then obviously maybe it's there to time focus on the documentation. It's, it just strikes me that and I'm not bagging on anyone on the ARB for a second, but it just it strikes me that we don't have a firm understanding of what the bottlenecks are, so we can actually start like identifying what we can do to to put some things in place. Because I just speaking as one participant, like I'm really keen that the people on my team can help the ARB in resolving some of these, sure. some of these bottlenecks. I just feel like we don't have a clear articulation of what those issues are right now. For me, like after like the, the, the third or fourth email from the odd mailing list on, about launchpad bugs, I just put that all into a folder, just going somewhere where I never read. Right. Uh, because I didn't have time. Whenever, like, whenever I get the email, I never really had time to read that bug and see whether it gets something. It'd be nice to, perhaps to establish, say, one person, or to like, have a rotation of people who are responsible for yeah. reading a new bug report. Or, or like, setting up systems so that if a report doesn't get touched this many days after somebody submit, submits, then the system will randomly email one of us and say, hi, you really should work on this right now. Yeah, stop, and which, which might be useful because right now it's like, well, somebody in the team will get to it. 
Yeah, so there's a somebody else's problem field right. uh, that you never know who's actually looking at a particular task at a particular time. One of the things I talked about last week, and I don't remember if it was Stefan or Jono, is maybe something like a patch pilot program mm -hmm. where we each say, you know, I'll take four hours on this Friday and that, or Saturday, whatever. You know, we set a time, like, so I'll take four hours in this time, and, and you know, in that time, I'll run through the queue and I'll respond to anybody who needs responses and make sure that things keep moving forward. And that way it's not, you have to think about it all the time or be working on it all the time, but we make sure that the queues are regularly covered. Mm -hmm. Would you say that, in the view of the board, would you say that, and I respect the fact that a bunch of you guys are pretty new, um, would you say that the, the impression I had when Alice and I talked last week, and we only talked briefly, is, is the, that most of the bottlenecks were lying with the fact that uh, with, with, with the reason was that the submissions were need need work, as in something came in, and essentially the bottleneck was with the people respond, like the people were submitting. It was not necessarily with the ARB, but the ARB are actually up to date. But the bottleneck is that all the submissions are up to date, but they're waiting on the people who make the submission to get back. Would you? What's the what's the take on the book? Because what I'm hearing today is a little bit different to what. The way I, maybe I misinterpreted you asked, but the, my interpretation of what you were saying last week was that everyone's actually here today. It's the, the, the issue is that people are submitting content that's not actually in line with what can be published in the book. Both, both true. Uh, but if they, because they're submitting content that isn't in line, then that means we have to keep going back to them and back to them and back to them and back to them and back to them. So it's like a a little bit in, instead of control. being a simple case of, oh, look at this app, I review it, I decide whether or not it's good. It's, I look at this app, it's not good. Um, we respond to them and give them a chance to improve and kind of go on to the next step. Are there public rooms of these interactions? It's just launchpad bugs right now. And, and so like the developers expect us to subscribe to the launchpad bug at this point? Um, so we're encouraging them to, yes, right. but they're not required to. Um, so what I do is I always email the developer and also CC the, the launchpad bug. So they get the direct email and... So the developer who submits the application is not required to subscribe to the bug. Is there any reason for that? Or there's not a requirement? Not all of them have launchpad accounts. And, but like, it's, it's silly to be using launchpad. Yeah. Yeah. But we're, so we're not using launchpad anymore. anymore. No also. problem. So, so the way it works now is actually... Um, there's a commenting interface right in the My Apps portal um, so that we can talk back and forth with the developer and they're, they're always, like, it doesn't matter if they have uh, a Launchpad account or are subscribed to a bug or whatever, it's, it's just always a communication. Yeah, they get an email through that, through that profile. Yeah. Do we have a list of common issues in those, in those uh, submitted apps? We collected yeah. some in the, yeah, in the last ARB meeting. Because I'm wondering if it would be possible to automate, <coughs> like a uh, actually, for submissions. Actually, yeah, we could do some tests. Also, started automating the troll packing mm -hmm. for for public. Um So yeah. that, for example, this last of requirements are actually automated. That part mm -hmm. with a small wrapper that kind of, well, that could be used to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. um, the we still have the case where um, quite a few of them don't actually package the tumble. So that doesn't really happen. Oh, so you just get a tumble with the yes. source? Yes. So mm -hmm. Or it's not even, sometimes it's not even source, it's a tarball with built binaries. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what they were going to ask as well. Is, um, when we originally put the ARB process together, packaging was um, a requirement of the developers. It sounds like right. these days it's not a requirement. Well, is that, is that the case? Yeah, because it should, well, it should be a requirement. <laughs> I, I, initially, like what, really initially what we got was basically because of all the technical um, issues with the ARB process, it was so difficult for them to actually make the package right that the ARB was letting. And now I was assuming that the ARB was going to do the packaging, which is, shouldn't be the case. But on the commercial side, we don't require them to do the package. In the eyes of a developer, they don't want to do the packaging. Yeah, we don't. Have, we, 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 we,
well to do the packaging. And yeah. it would be a lot quicker for you guys to do the packaging than to try yeah. to teach them how to do it. Yep. it. Yeah, it depends what kind of stuff we get. <laughs> so but Brian, you, Brian you, Thompson yes, over here, would. I am Fuzz. Uh, he's been doing stuff on the commercial side. Do you want to talk briefly about sort of your experience with helping helping the folks get yeah, started over I'm, there? I'm with you. So it's much easier. I'm with this guy here. It's much easier to go ahead and package it yeah. like for them. And then those who are more technical, the college ones that I did with, because um, a lot of the guys I did with the Windows guys, and I know nothing about the Linux and things at all. So, and you spot them pretty quick. Those of you all don't have to deal with that usually at all. So, you're dealing with ones that are already at least familiar with Linux. So, do it for them the first time. And then, so, give them a fish the first time and then teach them how to fish after that is what I found to be the easiest. And if you try to do the former first, it, it's usually way more of your time than you do just give them a simple part of it. Because if you teach them how to just update the existing package you have, the packaging tools are good enough today that that's possible. You know, that number seven's come all the way. You teach them how to just drop in a new tar bottle on their, their uh, release and, and, and about to change a lot of them to packaging. And most people are pretty comfortable doing that once you give them yeah. the framework. Yeah, it also seems like the optimal experience for the developer, right? Is that, you know, you, you care about writing your app. But aren't we like really going into like feature creep or scope creep here? Like, like if the RIB is now uh, a board that not only reviews applications for you know quality and and security and you know um, if we suddenly become an educational board as well. I mean, isn't that like a bit too much to ask for? I mean, shouldn't we focus on asking for you know packaged applications that we can actually get through and worry about what what else we could do as well later on like once we have actually yeah. you know managed to get some applications it seems, it seems to me that in many ways like if you look at it from the perspective of the personally consumer process like from, from, from the developers perspective they part, part of the reason why I think the AIB is really attractive is because traditionally we've expected application authors to engage in an operating system integration process right. like to learn their packaging and it's Obviously, it's not just learning how to use the tools, it's, it's learning the policy and the, the culture of Ubuntu as well. So it strikes me that, that the reason why the AMA is really attractive is many ways because we're saying, you're an app developer, and if you just care about writing your app, you can make it available on Ubuntu. We obviously have the natural result <laughs> issue of, in my mind, the, 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 the ideal scenario would be that the AMA does the package. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but I agree with MBO that what we don't want to do is turn the AMA into a group that goes out and encourages people to, to learn packaging. But in many ways, it should be, just in the dream world, it would be that I write an app, I submit it to the AIB process, the AIB package it for me, and it probably wouldn't take long. It, it probably will be less for the AIB package for me, but if I am competent, if I'm Daniel Holbach and I've written an app, or I'm Daniel Holbach's friend and he packages it for me, then that just really fast tracks through that process. So the AIB just has to review the package and then we're good to go. Right, yeah, it, yeah, my point is exactly this. Like, in an ideal world, it would be awesome, like we have automatic tools, they do the packaging for us, it's great. But I mean, today we, we want to get some applications through and if, if we are understaffed anyway already in the, in the board, it, it doesn't seem to me like it makes a lot of sense to actually say, oh, we actually, you know, increase our scope even more. I think part of it is a matter of, we started the ARB with an idea of what we thought right. the world needed, what we thought Ubuntu needed. And it's turning out that that's not actually what they need. We're not getting anyone submitting uh, submitting packages that are that are like already built, good, strong so uh, Ubuntu packages. Mm -hmm. they, they're just not. Submitting. So in all the thirty applications we have so not far, one. there's not a single not one, one that's actually. Yeah. Uh, one is packaged. No, and this is actually since the beginning. We, 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 I think we actually had one that was good. <laughs> yes, but that was just for testing. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, that, that was the like QTD sending a package to the RB process. I was like, yeah, yeah okay, well. But, but like, in the current apps we're looking at, there's not one that I would say it's, it's, um, it's like, there's some good apps in there, but right. there's not one that is like already packaged, ready to roll, where we can just say yes or no and then send it on. So when you, uh, just to just learn a little bit, when someone submits it, given the current set of submissions, when someone submitted an app, you're saying that none of them have been packaged. So is the response that goes back, has the response that's gone back to the developer being, you need to package this, is that what? No, so what I, I have two responses. One is, um, this tarball, I, I can't build or install it. Could you send me some install instructions or could you send me a source tarball? Or, so I've been like sort of customizing the message to each, looking for a clean source tarball that we could package. 
because uh, we can just run dhmake and do a quick, quick package. Or if they send me a binary package, then it's, then it's, I figured they have a little more understanding of packaging and it's, could you send me a source package? Here's how you, here's the, you know, flags right. you use to build so, a source so package. So it's a position whereby ultimately doing the packaging wouldn't be an issue. It's just that the problem is that the pack, the, the, what's being submitted is not in a comfortable way to package. Right? It's not yeah, it's like I couldn't package it if I tried. Right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like in many ways, so do you folks think that like the current resources in the area and possibly bringing extra people in could facilitate the idea of um, providing a package and service as long as we set the expectation that the tarball submitted needs to be in a format that you just want to get? I suspect that answer is going to be different for different ARB members. So maybe we'll ask each one of you, mm -hmm. do you think you have time to do packaging as well as voting? And I'm pretty sure the answer for you is no, because you just joined the tech board, so I know better. <laughs> so no time for packaging, but you could manage voting. Yes. Okay. Same with me. Okay. You can manage voting, not packaging. What's the question? Um, <laughs> in terms of the time you can, you, ha you can give to the ARB, the time you have available to commit to the ARB, would you have time to do packaging as well as voting on applications, or is it really just voting that you have time for, I reviewing think, and voting? I think at least for now we should do packaging as well. Just uh, because we will obviously, I th well, uh, maybe not obviously, but I think we'll see some problems and things that's coming, and we can build something in time that will make it easier for people to do it themselves. Okay, so that's two of us who do have some time to do packaging. Um, Brian has said um, he's not an ARB member yet, but he said that in the next few months he would have some time to do some packaging for us, even though he's not a member. Sorry, it might be worth keeping in mind that this might be a, just a short-term need. It might have to start providing automatic packaging. Yep. Your, the, the Do you have a timeline on automatic yeah, packaging? It's, you know, it's you have a sense of... the will fall, but I don't know within the cycle. So really? It's more or less. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have some kind of automatic packaging in place for Terminal 4. I don't know how successful it is. Yeah, it's going to be for buyer applications to start with. Of course, that, that, does, that doesn't solve the problem of people who submit tarballs that can't be built or installed anyway, yeah. but it, it at least... So maybe, maybe they would come in with ISE after a good after it has been trying to... Um, to yes. So AJ Mitch, um, we may need to have some stock responses for those submissions that aren't suitable, like no build system licensing is a mess, no packaging, etc. Yeah. If not, if the packaging is a requirement for submission and automatic packaging of source will only work when the upstream authors use some sane build system, quite a few use some ad hoc methods. But there's a documentation component there. So I've, I've been uh, building up um, a set of stock responses that I use um, and just putting them in our public documentation of how we do the review process. And it's, I mean, it's, you can see it's exactly that. It's like, uh, you sent, sent us a binary package, could you send us a source package? You sent us a, a, a binary tarball, could you send us a source tarball? Um, I don't have the one about licensing yet, but right. that's, that's going to be coming pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will create an automatic computing system for commonly used grid systems, and for the, the ones which do not use those grid systems, we can, we can actually create a separate part of ARB, which, which consists of packages only. So this part, people in so that team won't be reviewing the packages, but we will just be packaging those, um, which those, uh, I mean, yeah, that that actually occurred to me. Like something like an ARB contributors or ARB packagers or something like that. So another team that's open to anyone to yeah, join. They don't have to be a voting well. member. Like, to Elaine's point earlier about about how public the submissions are. Like maybe what I mean, it seems like there's a voting component and a packaging component. And I'm wondering whether if the if the submissions were more open, maybe whether the other people in the community would be interested. To, to well, they are open now. They're just launch pad tickets, but that right. doesn't mean people look at them. Can they get the tarball? Yep. Right. It's just it's just attached to the so ticket. Maybe if we formalize it. I mean, I don't know if the group would be interested in this, but maybe if we just formalize a bit more into like a group where people could kind of dip in and say, I'll okay, package this. <laughs> that then becomes incredibly similar to the usual packaging process. Yeah. Oh. It's. I, I'd say it's similar in the sense that it's packaging. It's some upstream having a, an application and someone else packaging it. That's pretty much what it is already. Makes sense. Well, I'd say to a degree because the AR, the thing is, 
The thing that's attractive in the ARB context, in my mind, is the experience of the upstream. Whereas if you're an upstream, like if you're, like if you're an upstream, and getting your package into Ubuntu is not. Yeah, but now you have this person who's doing the packaging. Side but I think it's a little bit different in the sense that the expectation of the ARB is that you will take it on. So we may, we may start off um, and kind of help you along the way, but as we're doing that, our constant communication is, this is what we did, this is how you do it, and we expect you to do it next time. But come to us for help if you can't figure out how to do it next time. I, mean, I think you make a really good point there. Like, it, is, it is definitely similar. It's just that mm -hmm. It seems to me like the experience of the upstream, the expectations are somewhat <coughs> different. So, you know, like, I remember when I was working on Jokosha, the, expect the expectation was, I never had the expectation that I could submit Jokosha somewhere and it would be packaged and, and land in Ubuntu. It was all about finding somebody who was interested in being part of the project as a continual relationship, like who would be interested in packaging it. Like, if there was no packaging expertise in the group. Whereas this is more of a single place, more of a single shop. Did you find anybody? <laughs> so, what is the procedure for subsequent versions? Will the authors will be able to send the new version? They, they have to get it re reviewed, but generally the review is yeah lighter weight the second time around because we've already done like the security checks and the licensing checks. So, we're just kind of looking for the, the diff between the last version and this one. Because it seems to me pretty unlikely to have authors that alone will. So I mean, several different applications. Well, there will be some, but I guess the most common case would be one of the one application. Mm -hmm. So the return case you were mentioning is the most likely to happen for a different version of the same application. Yeah. Or, yeah. or the same application for a different release, yeah. uh, like the next six months release. Good question, Alison. Is there a, you know, with the, with the list of bugs for the submissions, is there a queue of, or, or a tag of the bugs that are basically ready for packaging, essentially? Is there no. a way of like, looking at the list of all the packs? Oh, essentially, the submission is now in a, a position where it can be. That wasn't part of our process so far, so we haven't um, figured out what tags to use, and now we're not going to use Launchpad, so we won't. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about, is how do we, how do we use Launchpad tags for our process? Okay, let's see. Um, so I think... Uh, we came away with some good ideas for how to improve the process. One is um, packaging might help us, if we actually do the packaging, it might help us go faster. We might be able to build a community team that helps us with the packaging so we're not all doing it ourselves. Um, and then also the potential for some kind of patch pilot program where we each commit some chunk of time uh, to doing the review process. Did you say there's another session this week, Alison? Yeah. The session this week is not actually about the ARB, it's about review and how that integrates with uh, backports, just like the new package process in general. Do you think, do you think we need another ARB session or we could be able to kind of firm up some of these things into some work items? So my impression is that one more hour is not going to get us there. That we need, like we've, we've raised the issues and we're gonna have to take this to the ARB and talk about it with all the team members and work out the plan there. Do you um, think we could possibly get that discussion to happen before we have another meeting say on Friday? Yep, we could actually do that this afternoon. Most of the ARB is here, right? Isn't it We're two, two, we're so missing two. what I mean is we, we could like, for the two that aren't here, we could email them and then we'll list Maybe and we'll perhaps a, yeah. have a follow-up session discussion like, with that on Friday. That seems sensible. I think that'd be great. Because okay. I get the impression that like we've identified a lot of common themes there. It's been really interesting, like getting everyone's experience. And then there's one thing I'd like to do, for example, just in terms of my team, just identify how we can help. You know, what we can do. Of course. Like. Do we need to make another blueprint for that, or can we just ask this to be rescheduled? We'll make another blueprint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I would like from the people in the room, since I have your attention, we would really appreciate, especially if we're going to start doing packaging for folks, um, we want to set up a, these are the best practices for packaging. So it's like, use DH, use um, like what tools you should use, what stages you could use, and what we get right now when we send them is, you could do it five dozen different ways, which is fine. Um, you can do it five dozen different ways, but we just want to pick one way and kind of get people started on the path. So kind of what you've been doing on developer.ubuntu.com, but um, moving that on into how you build your tarball and how you make your package. 
Um, is it the, more general than just packaging? I mean, if you are targeting upstream motors who are better in doing some early sort of code distribution, you will also need to tell them, you need to separate data from binaries, you need to mm -hmm. follow FHS, you need to enable to customize the where you for the condition paths, this kind of stuff. Yep. So I wonder if the guidelines of mind are just for packaging or also it's more generally upstream guidelines. guidelines. Yeah. <coughs> so we have some material from the that we share with our distribution, so it might okay. be a good start. Yeah, because I think we've got pretty decent documentation as in the packaging guide for packaging itself. Yeah. The, yes, the program, but, but we don't have the how to be a good upstream guide, yeah, we'll which is what we need. Packaging is only really easy if your build system works properly. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, if upstream comes with a proper build system, it's easy. Automating packaging, the only possible way you can imagine it is if you can rely on some specific practices already embodied by the software itself. No matter, mm -hmm. like the software process and all that, that is in fact how it works. Okay, so yeah. actually have exactly now. What? So package me's requirements is actually an important piece of that. This is what we want to teach new. We want pe to teach new developers to make packages that package me can package. So maybe what we can do on that Friday session is, is to kind of drill into, for example, the where we feel like there's a delta in the documentation, right? Because I can imagine that one really practical goal here is to just say we feel like there's these bits are missing, um, and we can figure out how that's going to, for example, be presented on developer.bootsy.com. The other thing as well, I mean, I think Lane has been rather really interesting. I'm conscious that we don't, we don't skirt over it. Maybe think about, maybe in the next few years as well, as kind of review how the the existing Ubuntu packaging teams are interfacing with Airbnb in different ways. Actually, that, that is the Friday session. So Friday at 10 a.m., we're specifically talking about oh. new packaging process and how it works like across all of the different channels and oh. how those work together. So just to put on the upstream guide, I think that's something which exists in many other solutions. I think Fedora has some upstream guidelines or something. And I think that would be very useful if you guys would be willing to take the lead and put out some upstream guidelines which are independent of a specific term. Mm -hmm. So does somebody want to take the action on that, or? Be very, very it's a very, very large action, but... Uh, I can do that one. Okay, well, one With lots of help. <laughs> Thanks, Alison. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thank so, you, everybody. Thanks.